bring you greetings. I bring you greetings. Uh, National Head is not here at the moment, but I know his thoughts, his mind and spirit is with us. So also, uh, I want to thank the Lord for the life of the Porophis. I believe the Lord brought them our way when uh, we do not have any members in a Rehoboth. The Lord have used them mightily. According to scripture, as quoted in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11, it said, they are a gift from God. And indeed, they have been a gift that have been a blessing that have brought many of us on this line to uh, this uh, very stage of our Christian life. Even from my uh, level as the uh, regional head to then a member that maybe is joining us on the line for the first time. And we are very thankful. As the culture of the church demands, uh, giftings are moved around the church to bring greater blessing. So in the culture of COP, it has come to a time in God's own wisdom when this great gift, ascension gift we call it, some call it ministry gift, has to be moved to another level for the benefit and growth of the church. Because a part of me and the wife have served very well. I mentioned this during last week's service. I believe this Sunday, they will be bidding as a farewell for now, although in the same building working, but at another office. We deem it very necessary as a church to allot these very days ahead of Sunday to appreciate him. One will ask, is this godly? Is this biblical? Yes, it is. And it is unto the Lord for us to appreciate uh, the gift that God has given us and then talk about it. I believe there were 10 lepers that God, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ healed. The Bible tells us that one out of the 10 went back to thank the Lord for what he, the healing he has received. And Christ asks, where are the nine? Where are the nine? And so our Lord Jesus Christ himself is very mindful when it comes to Thanksgiving. Appreciation service, farewell service, are services that are very scriptural. It's a time for us to be able to say first to God, thank you. And then also to encourage the gift that God has given us to edge on and keep on doing the good work that God has called them for. Not to take much of your time and allow many of us to speak this evening. Uh, we want to say to the port office, on behalf of the national head, the regional executive, that we are thankful to God for their lives and what he has used them to. We join in with the songwriter that great things the Lord has done and we know greater things he will do. He has begun with them. We know he does not do uh, half jobs. At this other level, we know we'll see greater works, exploits being done by the poor of his to the glory of God. And so church, and great family at Railroad Temple. We are gathered this evening, and we'll be meeting again on Friday to say to God first, we are thankful of this gift you've sent our way. And as man is the method of God, may we see our dear Apostle Dr. Mike, our dear mother, uh, Cynthia, and the two beautiful girls and a young man among them, look in their face, pray for them and tell them we love you 
and we appreciate the years that you've been with us. You've poured your life not only to the brethren in Rehoboth, but to every one of us. And we want to say the Lord bless you. We are gathered together, brethren, to celebrate this uh, five precious lives that God has brought our way. And then farewell them to their next office, praying that the Lord will continue to use them mightily. May the Lord bless every one of us. I encourage every one of us to be uh, full participants from this evening as we've done previous weeks. Uh, this is the last week. This is the last days for the farewell. Uh, we want every one of us to participate. Uh, what do I mean by participating fully? That is praying for them. And as we gather like this, whatever the Lord has laid on your heart, testimonies about them, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it come as an encouragement to them. And we know at the end of the day, there will be fear of more vein, more anointing to uh, lead the youth, not only in our region, but the entire nation, and also be a light to the Church of Pentecost uh, worldwide. God bless you for coming. We invite others to come, especially those who are not able to do it, to make it today, uh, tonight. We expect that Friday will come in our numbers, and Sunday, oh, may we all lift up hands, songs, praising the name of the Lord for giving us a gift and gifts called the Porofi family. God richly bless you. Amen. 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 God richly bless you, Apostle Samuel, for giving us those opening remarks. I certainly believe we all have the understanding of what this week is all about as we celebrate the Portofis. With that said, I'd like to open the floor for our scriptural reading. I'm going to ask Sister Tracy, if she's in a good place, to begin the scriptural reading. Amen. 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 Today's scripture reading comes from James chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. And it says, Do not be deceived, my brothers and sisters. 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Mm. coming down from the father of our heavenly lights mm. who does not change like shift in shadows 18 mm. he chooses to give us birth through his word mm. of truth that we might be kind of first fruits of his created amen amen amen, amen. god richard bless you sister tracy thank you for giving us that scripture reading and without much ado, we're going to open the floor to our own Elder Mike, Elder Dr. Mike Ayi, and he's going to give us a short um, word as we then transition to the next part of the program. Elder Mike, the floor is open. Amen. Thank you. And we thank everyone for um, your presence. It is very important um, time. And uh, Christ gave us the example of appreciation just as our apostle an area head as mentioned. So we thank God for that opportunity. And I also bless the Lord that um, I'm even part of uh, this great occasion. Amen. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the need for appreciation. Um, it's Christ who actually show us appreciation. Uh, when we look at our life, when we look at ourselves, um, it is Christ that put value, uh, value on us. So uh, we know that um, Christ manifests his love for us uh, through um, the cross, the price that he paid um, on the cross. So uh, we would see that Christ did put appreciation on us. He appreciated us. He put some value on us. And um, one of the scriptures, when I was just thinking about this appreciation, one of the scriptures uh, that I thought about, it's, um, I believe one of the years we have this theme um, about the talents, but let me just quickly read uh, Matthew uh, 25 uh, from 14 to 21. I'm just going to read that quickly. Um, so it talks about the parable of the talent, but I just want to pull some shorting out. And then, um, so first it said, uh, Matthew 
25, 14 through 21, it says, for it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and trusted to them his property. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you deserve, you deliver to me five talents. Here, I have made five more talents. Now listen to what the master said. Uh, it's amazing. The master said that, uh, the master said to him, well done. Hallelujah. So Christ gave us a model of appreciation. When the person who he gave five talents was able to double it. Christ did not criticize the person. Christ did not just see it as anything. Christ understood the work that was put into changing that five talents into 10 talents. So he said, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. So when we talk about appreciation, the whole thing is to say well done. And we are all witnesses for what God has used the apostolic ministry of our, our pastor and, and apostle, Potiphi, the wife, uh, Dr. Cynthia, Potiphi, and the family to bless this church. We know, you know, if you count in five, um, if you go by the biblical standard, then they should just have produced like, you know, um, I believe when they came around uh, six to 10 people, so it should have been 20, right? But look at our numbers now. We are running in the numbers. We are running in great numbers. So I believe if Christ is standing out there and Apostle Potiphi is giving out his, his, you know, his, his final report, the, the, the uh, handover report, um, I believe Christ is going to say, well, well, well done. You know, like scripture when it says, verily, verily, verily. So um, we want to say that Christ was the model that showed us how to appreciate. You want us to know that when good work has been done, it is our obligation to show that. Now, I believe that appreciation motivates us to continue doing even greater work. When you do greater works and people do not really care what you have done, it dampens your spirit. You know, so Christ gave us this model. So as we have come together tonight, just as Christ told the servant, well done, I'm expecting that you also, following the example of Christ, would say, well done. Well done, because we all are witnesses to the great and many things that God has used his servant to do for this um, great uh, district, which is Rehoboth. So when we are coming here to appreciate, I want you to basically bring it down to a basic level. And that is to say, well, done. hallelujah. We are not here to criticize because Christ did not criticize the one, you know, sometimes, yeah, there are constructive criticism, but it is not the time for that. It is the time to say, well done, for what God has used our apostle to do. He says, you have been faithful over a little, and we know our apostle was given a little, but he was very faithful over that little. And it says, I will set you up. It is even my prayer that God would set him over much that you no, know, yes, he was given a letter and he was very faithful to that letter. The family were very dedicated in prayer in all the different areas. They were very dedicated. And we also are here just on this, you know, to stand in the place of Christ to say, well done. So it says, I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. It is a prayer that as we are here to celebrate and to appreciate and to say the well done aspect of what God has used our apostle to do. It is a prayer that you will set him over much and the master would, uh, would, would even call him, not just our words, but the master would say that, um, enter into my joy. This is our prayer to So I just wanted to, and um, I know we don't have that much time. I just wanted to create a background that an appreciation is standing in the place of Christ and saying and recognizing as human beings that a good job has been done on this earth and that person needs appreciation. Now, um, I was just reading the scripture. Now, let me see if I have that scripture. You know, um, somewhere on Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 through 16, it says, do all this without grumbling 
and disputing that you may be blameless and innocent. Uh, that's Philippians 2, 14 through 16. I'm reading that quickly. That you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as light in the world, holding fast to the word of light, so that the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. The most disheartening thing about doing work, you know, and this, I just want to tie this into the concept of well done. When you do great work and people do not appreciate, it makes you feel that the work has been done in vain, that the labor was in vain. I pray that P, uh, the PRWC Rehoboth, we would appreciate our apostle, the man that God set him over us, to nurture us, to feed us. When, you know, people, marriages, different, different situations, you know, uh, financial issues, so many situations, this man of God was right there and standing with us. So I want us to know and to understand that when we don't show appreciation, there is that feeling that we run or our work was in vain. So in this appreciation week, I want you to know that even just the simple word well done goes a long way to show that the work that God plays in his hand was never in vain. And you are the fruit, you are the witness, you are the tree that is showing forth, you are the light that is showing forth that truly God has done this work through the man of God that he has given us. Um, there's not much time, and I want us to use most of the time for the, uh, for the appreciation. So I'm going to, to just hold here, but I just want to read two short scriptures uh, for us so that as we do the appreciation, we would remember that. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to read three scriptures. One of it is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Hebrews 13, 17. All right, so Hebrews 13, 17 says that obey your leaders and submit to them. Obey your leaders and submit to them for they are keeping watch over your soul. For the past four years, God has burdened this family with the souls that is in PIWC Rehoboth. God has burdened him and he kept watch over our souls. And he says, as those that he will give an account. So it's not, it's, I just want you to understand that the word that God gave to him is going to give an account for that. But it is up to you and me to be witnesses and to say that the work he gave to him, he performed it as the Lord had wanted him to do. So it says, let them do this with joy and not grumbling for, for that would be of no advantage to you. You know, the grumbling comes when we do not appreciate. But even just when we look at it from, from a numerical strength, from a financial strength, you know, one, let, me, let me say something short, then I will, I will stop. Many, you know, I've been, I believe, um, at least I've been a rebel for eight, eight months. Look at our music industry, look at our, mini, our music um, ministry. <laughs> Many times in my old church, one Sunday after the other, we struggle. I'm, I'm talking real struggling. And I don't know how this family put this together. There's never been a Sunday that I will be at Rehoboth and we don't have organists or we don't have a drama. You know, <laughs> in other churches, it's one thing after the other. You know, and I look at this, I'm like, oh God, thank you for a place like that. You know, because we all, we all, this is like the organization at Rehoboth. When you come in, you are proud even to invite someone to follow you because you are not ashamed that you come and then the organist will not come to church or the, the, the singers, one will be singing alto and one will be, you know, singing. 
everything is so uniform and so unison. You know, it makes me remember um, in, 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 in 2 Corinthians, I believe, when they, they were dedicating the temple and it said everything was uniform. Every Sunday at Rehoboth, come random, call anyone, come there, and you witness that even what other churches are struggling with, we don't struggle at all. So before I leave, I'll say, Papa and family, God truly bless you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. May he grant you peace beyond uh, recognition. And just as he said, we are praying that even as you go, your, your, your ministry would enlarge and become greater. May he meet your need, both spiritually, physically, uh, financially, you know, emotionally, all the needs that you may have, even as you move forward. May the Lord keep you and may he bless you. I will just yield so that we'll have more time for other testimony. But God bless you all. Amen. So let's Amen. and tell you also, well done. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God richly bless you, Elder Mike. Thank you for giving us that timely word as we are in a season of thanks and appreciation. Mm -hmm. So without much further ado, we will be going to our testimonials. As has been explained, this is the opportunity for you to just give thanks for what the Lord has done. No testimonial is too small. So if it mm. is in your heart, we ask that you simply share so that the port of fees um, can acknowledge you and that they can also hear you. Um, as we go through the testimonials, we ask that you come on camera if you are in a good place um, as you share your testimonial. For those that would like to give a testimonial, we ask that you also raise your hand, utilize the raise hand function as we go down the list of um, incoming testimonials. Amen. Okay. So with that said, I'd like to call our sister Grace Dukoku for the first testimonial. Um, and as she is preparing, please raise your hand and using the Zoom function, if you would also like to go after her. Thank you, Sister Grace. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I just want to use this time to just say God richly bless you, um, Apostle Mike and Mama Cynthia, for just all your work and just everything that you have done overall. I remember um, I shared with um, the ladies yesterday um, that around August 2018, that's when I decided to give my life to Christ. <laughs> And around that time, I was praying. Um, I was in undergrad. It was my sophomore year. And I was praying to God for um, a church community that was at least close to church. I mean, close to school so that it would make it easier for me to travel back and forth. Um, for those that know, those that don't know, I go to Montclair State, which is only about 20 minutes away from um, Rahabud. And around that time was also the time that Apostle Mike and Mama Cynthia were transferred to Wayne. But at that time, I didn't know them, but I was still a student at Montclair State University. And that was also the time where Apostle, well, around October is where Apostle was pushing for MSU Pensa to begin on campus. Um, so I met Apostle and Mama Cynthia through Pensa at Montclair State. And I remember my friend invited me to that meeting and um, I was like, okay, if there's a Bible study on campus, that's great because you know, not a lot of things push um, for Christian faith, especially since I go to a very liberal school. We see a lot of LGBT and all of that that goes on on campus. So um, especially with me giving my life to Christ, it would be great to have a church community here on campus. And that's when I met Apostle Mike and I remember that first meeting, Apostle told the then leadership of Pensa to add me to their group chat. And I was just like, their leadership group chat. And I was like, wait, I just met Apostle. Why is he adding me to the leadership group chat? Um, but I just want to thank you, Apostle, for just seeing that, you know, leadership in me, that leadership potential in me. Because I remember that first year I served as an event coordinator. And then the following year, I served as the vice president of Pensa Montclair, as well as the following year, I served as the president 
Um, and many, many times I wanted to give up. <laughs> Apostle and Mama Cynthia now. Um, many of the times that I wanted to give up, but they continued to push me and to encourage me and to share with me that, you know, doing ministry and working with people is really not easy and you really need the hand of the Lord to really guide you. So I really want to say God bless you, Apostle, um, for just seeing that leadership in me. Thank you for all the sacrifice sis that you have done for um, MSU Penta, um, sacrificing your time, your efforts, your resources. Till this day, Montclair State Penta stands strong. And I thank God for just all the sacrifices that you have made. Many of the times where Apostle would have um, Bible studies or Friday prayers or even national programs, but yet um, when Montclair State would have a revival, Apostle would not only just come, but he would show up with resources and ready to lay hands and deliver people. So God richly bless you, Apostle, for everything that you have done for um, MSU Pensa. I stand on behalf of Montclair State Pensa, and I just say God richly bless you and Mama Cynthia. Um, to this day, many souls are still being saved um, at MSU Pensa, and Pensa was also a blessing to my walk with Christ, um, not just for me serving as a leader, but it was also a blessing to me when I was just a member. And, you know, it was because of God using you and for your push to, you know, push my clay state, Pensa, to be where it is today. Um, Pensa still is gaining a lot of favor, even on campus. Many of the deadlines we have missed but because of the favor and because of the, the positive feedback that we get from Pensa, um, we will miss that line, but yet we'll go into the office and they'll say, no, approve the rooms, approve the equipment, um, approve their program. Like they need to have this revival. Um, so God received bless you, Apostle. And, you know, thank you so much for welcoming me, welcoming me as well as my family. Not many Apostles reach out to their members to check in on them. But many are the times where Apostle would reach out to myself and my family. Many are the times where Apostle would say, hey, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your family. I'm, pray I'm praying that God will see you guys through. Um, so God richly bless you, Apostle. Um, and I can't forget Mama Cynthia. Um, but Mama Cynthia and I, we, we go way back. So <laughs> um, God richly bless you, Mama Cynthia, for all that you have done, um, your advice, your mentorship, your leadership. Um, God richly bless you both. Um, amen. 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 God richly bless you, Sister Grace. With that said, we will now open the floor for Dikna Stephanie Yamiche to give her testimonial. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Um, so, um, Apostle First Lady Valerie Verna Covey. Um, God richly bless you all so much. I begin to speak and then my heart races. Um, this week I was thinking, you know, you all have done so much and at least like what is something that I can say a few and I've put down some points so I don't forget because I really wanted to highlight these for you all. Um, coming into Rehoboth, um, Apostle and First Lady of course knew me because of who my parents were, but um, them coming here allowed us to build a relationship. And I remember I shared with Gap yesterday, when Apostle came, he noticed that I had some self-confidence issues. And I remember the day that he pointed it out to me. We were standing, I think it was something with a picture. He was like, Stephanie, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna get uh, fix it. And um, they truly, truly went like they the extent that they went to nobody has ever done that and it shows that they truly care. I showed a book that Apostle and First Lady got me the self confidence uh, workbook, just to help me work on who I was and to build myself up to build confidence to even take pictures to stand and speak to people to not be nervous or so self conscious and it has really been a blessing to me because it was something that I was worried about. But the extent that you two went to help me, it really meant a lot. And if I haven't said it, I want to say right now, God richly bless you. Not only that, but you took time to identify giftings in us. Um, I was not someone who liked preaching. And I very honest, like there was a point where I felt like I don't even know how to lead prayers, but we had examples 
of Apostle. Apostle is so prayerful. Mama Cynthia is so prayerful. And I kind of see more of their prayer life even outside of what we see at Rehoboth. And it was inspirational to me. I kid you not, I've prayed to God and I've said, God, help me to pray as much as they do. And truly, truly, God has helped me. I can pray five hours on end without, like, without stopping. And Apostle always, when we go to Friday Light It Up service, he was always like, let's bask in his presence. And time is running, oh, but that was his favorite statement. Let's bask in his presence. And I wanted to get into that presence. Apostles always wants to be in that presence. What, like, I know, I know God. I know I have prayerful pre uh, parents. So I know that praying is good, but he, he just loved the presence of God. And it, it, it inspired me to want to like, hunger deeper and truly you've helped me to pray you've helped me to fast uh you you have been an inspiration not only to me but i know to many so for that as well we say god bless you not many got to experience even i got the privilege of experiencing marriage counseling with them and that was even a whole nother it was a wonderful journey on its own and the advice that they give the time that they take um, to even go through with you. Apostle has a busy schedule. If he misses an appointment, he will make sure he fits you in because our marriages were truly, truly important to him. And I know that his doors and mama's doors will always be open to all of us when it comes that time so that we can be given the, the gems to have beautiful, successful marriages such as theirs. So for that as well, I say God richly bless you. Um, when I when Apostle um, had recommended me to be a deaconess, I didn't know what he saw because I wasn't even at Reho, but I was at school. And I asked him why, like why? And the things that him and mama listed, it shows that they pay attention to you. I feel like sometimes I'm very much involved with things outside of Reho, but that I don't con contribute my very best. But everything that you do, they see they pay attention. God has really given them the eyes to identify potentials and giftings in young people. And for you all even recognizing me in such a manner for that as well, I want to say, God bless you. Um, there was a word that once mama gave me um, during prayer, and I want her to know, I have it recorded on my phone. I go back to it periodically and I listen and it fuels and motivates me to push on in this walk. Like I'm never doing too much for God. I'm never, you know, it. when I feel like giving up, it even tells me to, you know, push forward because God has something for me. So for that as well, God bless you. And to the children, Cubby, Verna, Valerie, God richly bless you all so much. You've literally become our siblings. Caleb literally loves you all. Kobe is Caleb's friend, even though they fight a lot. But um, you all have been a blessing to the children's ministry, especially. Valerie graduated and she didn't leave us hanging. She knew that we needed help and she would come and just continue to take care of the younger ones. Literally, Peter. Peter's friend is Valerie, okay? Peter's friend is Valerie. Um, and I want to say God bless you all so much. I'm glad that you all are still in the area. So we still get to connect and Caleb still gets to see you. That honestly makes me happy. The last thing I'll say is you all have become family. Um, everybody knows my parents travel a lot and Apostle and First Lady will always be coming in and checking in on, on us. And sometimes First Lady will know I'm so tired and she will come with food. and. It, it's always a blessing, whether it's pizza, whether it's fried rice, chicken, whatever we want. They stepped in as a father and a mother when our parents were gone. And for that as well, we really, really want to say God bless you. We appreciate everything that you all have done for us. And it's my prayer that God will bless you. Anytime you go on your knees, may heaven respond to you and meet you at the point of your needs. We love you so much. We love you. Amen. Thank you so much, so much. Thank you. Amen. God richly bless you, Dickness Stephanie, for sharing um, your testimonial. Um, with that said, I will open the floor for our sister Maureen to give a testimonial. And for those who are on the line, I ask that you raise your hand so I know to call on you for those that want to give a testimonial. Sister Maureen, the floor is open. Sure. 
Thank you so much, Eunice. Hold on. I want to turn my video on. Um, apologies, I'm actually using my husband's phone this evening. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so uh, where do I start? I remember this was quite a few years ago and one of my first interactions with and it wasn't even a direct interaction, but one of my first experiences with a, um, with Apostle was during a Pentecost conference. And just hearing him preach was one of the first times, and you know, this was, you know, now with technology, you know, a lot of people, you know, preach with, you know, PowerPoint presentations and they use depictions and things like that. But I remember um, at the conference was the first time um, I'd actually seen someone preaching and was very intentional about connecting the word with some of the, the physical elements of the world and then also connecting that with, with some of the things that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And it was one of the, one of, I don't want to say the few times, but it was such an impactful time for me because it really allowed me to understand that there's, you know, the messages and the teachings that are in the Bible are still very much so applicable to today's world. You know, so many times we sometimes hear preachings and messages and they, they'll kind of take an excerpt and they'll kind of just, you know, delve onto that without really allowing us to understand the connection with that word and the message that God is trying to give to us. And for me, that was just such an enlightening time because I was like, this is a man of God who understands that it's not just about saying whatever the words are in the Bible. Absolutely, that, that is the key of it. But it's really someone who wants to make sure that his audience is really able to connect the works of the Bible with their day-to-day -day lives, with their day-to-day -day actions. And it's not just a passage. It's about really opening our eyes and allowing us to be able to delve deep into what God is trying to tell us. Um, as someone who really kind of always wants to know why and really kind of understand the messages behind what is being spoken to us, it was really, it was a wonderful experience for me to understand that this is a man of God that's understanding that, you know, not that times are changing, but he wants, you know, the new generations who are coming in who kind of have questions and they're not asking these questions to be insubordinate or to be disobedient. They're asking these questions to better be able to create that personal relationship with God. A lot of you know, my generations when we we're grown up, yes, we went to church and yes, we grew up in church. But if we were honest with ourselves, our relationship with God was pretty superficial and it was through our parents' relationships and our parents' connections. You know, we kind of have this kind of saved by family kind of grace, like, oh, I've been going to church forever. So I, I know God and I know Jesus. And it's, if you don't really truly know the word of God, then you don't know God because that is God. And it was really an opportunity for me to be like, wow, there are men of God in this church who will really understand that it's not just about saying that this is what God has said in a message or in a verbiage and kind of leaving it at that. They want to use, you know, he wants to use every tool available, whether, um, you know, a graph, whether um, a picture, whether whatever tool it is that he feels as though he's going to be able to communicate to make sure that every single person is hearing that word through whatever medium they take to understand. Um, I don't know if many of us know, but it, it's kind of, there's psychology behind all of us kind of learning in different ways. People learn by hearing, people learn by seeing. And that to me was just really heartwarming to understand that there is that next level. Um, so I witnessed that from, um, from our apostle um, a few times. And during COVID, um, I would say, um, I got married towards the end of 2019. Um, and as some of you guys know, my husband and I have some winter sports. So for about a month, um, we were out of town for January of 2020. So when we came back, um, I was kind of, I was attending church and I was doing it virtually because we, we had that option here and there. But I didn't really feel as though there was a difference with me being in church in person versus being me being there virtually. And, and understanding the word of God and understanding that the church is about fellowship, I was like, no, there's, 
there's something wrong with that if I'm not physically in a place and I'm not yearning to be in that place. Mm -hmm. And um, through visiting family in Jersey, that allowed me the opportunity to, first of all, to come to Rojo Books. Mm -hmm. And when I came there, I felt a piece of stillness in me mm -hmm. and an opportunity to kind of be like, when I walked out, I realized that I was filled with something that I didn't realize that I was actually missing. And for me, that was a moment for me to be like, okay, you kind of have to kind of take a step back and reassess why is it and what is it that is being filled within you? Is it, and, and you know, is, is it the worship? You know, sometimes people always think it's sort of a charisma thing, but is it the worship? Is it the message? But I really felt a sense of wholeness in that moment that really made me feel like, okay, there's something about this place that really, that I need to explore, that I need to come to. And through coming to Rehoboth, I've been, you know, privileged to be a member of this beautiful family here. Um, and then also to get to know Mama Porterfee as well, who is a valiant woman of God who uses her, her intelligence and her, her personal and her even professional giftings that's been given by God and has brought that into the church. And that's something that I'm always, um, not just amazed to see. So that's something that I love to see because I feel as though growing up, there was a sense of church and then there was our world outside of church. And when we fail to make that connection, it makes it hard for us to see church as being part of our family, right? So I should be able to go to aspects in my church for whatever I need, whether spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And I think that we don't realize it, but we kind of have that divide and that distinction apart from that. So whenever I see Mama Porterfee kind of just in her element, it's, there is no difference that when she's in her counseling mode, she's still a woman of God. When she's preaching, she's still a woman of God. And, and it really allowed me to be able to see you can kind of bring all those elements of yourselves into church and it all becomes a part of you. Um, so as you both are not leaving our presence because you were still right down the road, um, I just want to just thank you both for availing yourselves to allow God to, to use you um, while maintaining who you are, but then also allowing people to realize that there can still be a bit of change in and, and understanding that you you are both individuals that are allowing yourself to grow with the times while still maintaining the word of God and the vision that he has for both his children and the church in the future. Um, something Apostle and Mama sometimes say to me, um, and I think it's always funny, they don't, they don't realize that I think it's hilarious. They're always like, the church is changing. You know, you used to do like, you don't remember 15 years ago, it didn't, it didn't look like this. And, and they're very, very correct about that. And that's not to say that we have to wait for a change in church to love it. But I think that reminds me that we have to understand that God is always moving in us and God is always availing himself to us and to the church in different ways. And that it is not just about waiting for the church to do something, but we are also part of the church and that our actions and our movements and our commitment also make a difference. So thank you both so very much. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Sister Maureen, for giving us, um, for giving the part of me that testimonial. With that said, I will open the floor for Sister Peggy to give her testimonial. And if anyone would also like to go after her, we, I ask that you raise your hand so that I can call on you next. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, uh, first of all, God bless you all. Um, words fail me when I think of everything. And I've been doing my best and try my best not to be silent in this moment because I'm I try not to say much, but uh I'll do my best to say what I need to say without um shedding a tear. <laughs> um this testimony is long overdue and and it's mainly because I it took me a while to even accept everything. Um before I mean I've known I, I want to say I've known the Portuguese for a long time, especially Apostle. 
um, have been through quite a few phases with him. And then I have actually made a joke about how Apostle have technically been uh, my brother, <laughs> my uncle. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he became my pastor and then my, my spiritual father. So I've been to, through quite a few phases with Apostle. And also um, getting to know Safamame has been a whole different um, ball game for me. Um, coming to Rehoboth has been a, a life changer for myself. Um, when Apostle was transferred back in the, uh, back to the area, um, I actually saw him, I don't know if you remember, I saw him at a wedding back in 2018. And then he says, oh, Peggy, I'm back in the area. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, so I'll come and visit. And that was it. Like, I just came to visit, um, came to visit Rehoboth and, um, things, you know, took place. Now, um, the decision to even join Rehoboth was honestly, it was it was kind of a push and pull for myself due to the fact that I was active in another church. However, I wasn't active. I, that's a whole different story. Now, um, like the, the reason I'm saying this whole testimony is overdue is because um, self mommy and uh, Pastor does not know, even my parents don't know these um, this whole testimony itself. They don't know what they actually pulled me out of. Um, before I came to Rehoboth, um, I had already decided to stop going to church completely for almost a year. And <laughs> I did not um, I did not bother myself to do anything with church. And it's mainly because I was just trying to figure things out for myself. And um, when I uh, when Apostle said, so just come and visit, and I went to, I, I visited, we spoke, I came to church. And I figured, okay, I mean, I can do something with my time now for God, and then we'll go from there. That's all I said to myself. Okay. And then, um, unfortunately, a very close mentor of, um, of mine passed. Um, and that was the first experience of, you know, close, um, somebody close to me passing. And then months after, my older brother passed. So in less than a year, I was dealing with a lot. Um, nobody knows this either, but I fell into deep depression where um, for almost three months, I was literally just in bed. I refused to go to work. Um, I was fortunate enough. Oh, this is why I don't tell you. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to be able to have a, um, a job to let me stay home for that long. Um, but I was making it to church on Sundays and doing what I had to do for church. And then I'll come back home. And then Monday through Friday, I just stay in bed the whole time. And nobody knew this, not even my parents. And I didn't, um, I just figured I would just get through the motions and get to where I need to get to. Um, by the grace of God, uh, so for mommy, I think, I don't know if you should remember this. I just called her one day and I said, so for mommy, I think I wanna start a business. <laughs> I wanna start a, um, a program. Now, this whole thing was, it was confirmed to me before um, by um, Pastor Carl, because he just, it was something I was trying to have a confirmation for. And Pastor Carl was like, have you thought of doing this? And then like that same weekend, she like, I, I was like, okay, I know I need to do this. However, my faith, my faith and um, everything, I was, wasn't there yet. So I had, that was like maybe two years prior <laughs> to the whole thing um, so when I so I just randomly called someone I was like I think I want to start this and then she just started breaking it down okay what are you going to do how do you have this do you have that do you have that and the whole thing like I just the whole time she was talking I was quiet and she didn't realize I was writing everything <laughs> I was writing everything down and um that made me um I'm, a, I'm very spontaneous, so I usually don't even care to plan things. So that gave me the <laughs> structure to be able to go ahead and plan certain things out and write things down and do um, go from there. That conversation was literally a year before I even started my business. Um, but when, um, when I was going from there, I mean, obviously responsibilities came in with church responsibilities and then everything became a lot but I was pushing through because I was able to see how, 
I was able to see how a self mama was handling things in terms of family, being able to, you know, literally in school, family, church, all of it. And um, I've, I even like called her one day. I was like, so mommy, you want to be my mentor? And that was, that was it. <laughs> we just, we just kept it like that. But the mentoring was more of a, a distance thing, but she knew, I mean, I knew I took her as my, my mentor because that was somebody I definitely looked up to and, and loved. And um, I was, I, I admired her because I saw a lot of things that I would, I, I, I saw things that I was doing that she had already done. And I was like, okay, this is possible. So I can definitely go from there. Um, also Apostle on the other hand is, um, I don't know how to explain Apostle because I've, I've taken him as my uncle. <laughs> and besides us speaking, uh, I, I, I personally feel special because I, we speak the same language. So it's like whenever I talk to Apostle, it's like, I don't know how to explain it, but there's always um, a piece and, um, and, and there's a piece that I always get whenever I speak to him. So it's this relationship that I've come to have with Apostle and um, Safamame has been an amazing one. I do my best and try my best not to get too, att too attached to my pastors <laughs> due to the fact that we know uh, Pentecost, uh, they have to leave us. So I try my best not to get too attached, but it's it's so comforting to know that my time at Rehoboth have made me grow so much. Um, the day, I think we had, um, I think it was probably the last LP and Apostle called a few people to pray for. I usually would just stay back as either I would be singing up or I'd be in the back. For some reason, there was so much with the whole depression thing going on and I just went up there. Ella Safmame um, came over to pray and that day I just, Real, I just I just felt everything release off of me and had enough strength and faith to move up and move forward. And I felt like every single time there was a sermon in church, like I took, I always took all the sermons personally because I always felt like it came from me. And my faith has been built up so so much. Like the whole even if starting a whole business during the pandemic is not a joke, okay? It's a, it's serious. And the fact that I was able to make it through the whole thing till now and still going strong, I just want to give all the glory to God and also want to thank God for the lives of Mama Cynthia and Apostle because I honestly, I personally feel like if I said no to coming to Rehoboth in the first place, I'm not sure where I would be right now. And I just... um coming to our above, um, Apostle, thank you so much for inviting me over. And I, I've definitely found a new family um, in Rehoboth. And I know everyone can testify of the goodness and, um, you know, what God has done through you for us. And I don't know if you see it. And a lot of people, everybody love, everybody love you guys. And I, I just cherish and appreciate how much Safa Mami really loves what she does. I know sometimes we like joke around like, oh, Safa Mami does Safa Mami. But she literally loves what she does. It's, it, I can't explain it. And it's just, it, it kind of it like oozes out of her. And um, it's just, it just shows how much you actually care for everyone. And I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, I've never said it enough. I per, I know I, I, I hold back a lot and I don't say much, but um, I just couldn't let this whole week go by without saying anything and just know that I've, I really, really do cherish you and I appreciate everything you've done for me, um, praying for me and talking and um, just begin with me just whenever. Sometimes we'll just be on the phone and just talking just, just for whatever and it's not even anything. And that alone means a lot to me. So I just wanted to say thank you so much and um, I'm gonna stop now cause I'm gonna keep crying. Okay, thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you too. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. To God be the glory. God bless you, Sister Peggy, for sharing your testimonial to the Porter Feast. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite Sister um, Stephanie Quartzen to give a testimonial. And then, as always, I encourage you all who are on the line to raise your hand or to message me um, on what to message me on WhatsApp. 
if you would like to also give it back to your servants. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's even just thinking about where to start, it's it's so much. But one thing I can definitely say is how thankful I am for both of your ministries and just your care, your compassion for each and every person that you've interacted with, whether it's the smallest interaction or even just the glimpse of even just um, meeting with you both. This entire family is so memorable. Like, I will first say that. I remember my first you know, growing up in Pentecost, you always hear about pastors that are doing things left and right. But then I heard about um, Pastor Portia. I'm like, oh, you know, this guy is very young man of God and he's doing things in the youth and you always hear about it. But then, and I got to really experience and this was like youth camp so long ago. And then I remember after, um, after the preaching, we got to like speak to our leaders afterward and then I spoke to him briefly. I spoke to both of you briefly, actually. And then what's funny is that the following Easter convention, I'm passing by just random and you remembered my name. So I was like, oh my goodness. You know, sometimes you think that people don't remember your name, but the fact that you even remembered not only who I was, but just remembering me in general, it meant so much to me because again, growing up, not many leaders have made um, that time to really um, interact with the youth. So the very fact that you um, did that, and I was able to remember that at such a young age has impacted me um, so much. So just zooming forward to um, Rahabat, it's just, it's honestly been amazing being under your leadership, under your ministry, because just as everyone has attested to, you have helped us so much spiritually grow and really pushing us to even like go deeper when it comes to our relationship with God. And I write a lot of quotes of like leaders that have really impacted me. And one thing I can say about Apostle is how he loves to pray. So one thing I'll mention is that um, that I wrote down is that the only way that someone can start praying is by praying. And every time I get tired of even all praying or anything, I will remember that quote. And I'm like, you know what, let me not depart from my um, spiritual life and continue to press forward. So I appreciate you so much, Apostle, for just opening that opportunity to grow spiritually in prayer. And then also just for the opportunity in general, like sometimes I don't even want to discredit the churches I've grown up with because we're all the same family, but I always felt overlooked, whether it was just um, being just someone that coming to church or being a number, et cetera, or being, again, like it was said under my parents, but um, you've seen me for who I was, who I am. And um, just seeing the different talents of how I can contribute to the kingdom, it, it really opened me to the possibility of actually participating the way I have. Never did I ever think that I was going to be doing the things that I'm doing in the church. And I say this laughing because I literally couldn't have seen myself um, participating the way I have been because um, in, back in my old church, it, I would just come under my parents and then I would go home. But being given that opportunity, I just thank God for your life, for even seeing these things in me and um, just helping me expand and really sharpen at it. And I appreciate you so much. Uh, Mama Cynthia, I can't even start. <laughs> And I can't even start without crying, but I'm going to try and propose myself. But I thank you so much for um, caring so much. And I can only remember like the first interaction I had with you at Rahabath, the fact that you just came up to me and was so open and honest. Oh, let me um, connect with you. Never did I even have an interaction with a leader like that. So that meant so much to me because I knew you were different from whomever I experienced. And then just being able to comfortably speak to you and not feel nervous and, I'm sorry, okay, so not feel nervous and really open up to you and actually share issues that I've been 
praying about dealing with. Um, just thank you for making that a space for me to even open up to you about. And I, I truly thank God for your life, for even establishing GAP, because um, it was funny. It started before um, GAP started before I even heard about it. So when I did, and you know, Eunice is the one that showed me, I was so upset. I'm like, oh, but why wasn't I told about this sooner? <laughs> but I thank God so much for um, just establishing this, um, for us to really understand the power that is in prayer. That's one thing I can really attest to your ministry in general is that for us to really grow spiritually and prayerfully and truly seek after God. So I thank you so much for the candid moments, mm -hmm. for the time in and out of church, even the fact that um, when I call Apostle Hugh, even in all his busy schedule, his meetings and all of that, he would still make the time to call me back or even answer my call. Like I would have never thought that that was possible. So it's the little things that, that I cherish so much because it shows that you care ever so deeply for each and every person that you interact with. So before I start crying again, I just want to, again, just thank you both and the entire family so much for availing yourselves as um, servants of God and really just being shepherds of this house. Like, <sighs> okay, yes. Well, again, thank you so, so, so much. And God richly bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you, Sister Stephanie. Um, so I'm just going to go right after her because in a way my testimonial connects to Stephanie. Um, so prior to coming to Rehoboth, um, I was going to a different church within um, COP and around, I think it was 2018. Um, and Stephanie reached out to me and she was telling me, oh, Eunice, this, this new pastor and He's at Wayne, New Jersey. He has a passion for the youth and like, you should come. And I was like, and, and Stephanie was just like, oh, like he's so genuine. And the, and for the first lady, like, she's so amazing. Like, Eunice, you have to come. And I was like, Stephanie, you're not tell what you're saying is not, is not the truth. There's no way. Like what you, cause she was just saying so many good things. It was just like unbelievable because my experience that I've I've had with um, past leaders, um, not to bring them down, but it didn't align up to what she was describing about the porta fees. Um, and so, and then, so she continued to go, she continued to go to Rehaba and I continued to stay on campus because I was being stubborn. Um, but eventually, she, um, you know, she continued to tell me about the porta fees and, and I should come to Rehaba and it was different. And then she also mentioned that um, she gave my number to Pastor Mike. I was like, Stephanie, why did you give my number to Pastor Mike? He's going to call me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he eventually did um, end up calling me. And um, I, knew one of, I knew if he was to call me, one of the things that he would ask about is Pensa. And I had been part of Rutgers Pensa. Um, prior to Apostle Mike coming to um, Wayne, New Jersey. And I knew that once he started talking to me, he would ask me to be part of it and be part of, um, and to just, you know, support the vision of just sharing the gospel on campus. But, you know, I wanted no parts of it. But eventually the call came. Um, and when the call did come, I don't know, God being so strategic, one of the things that Apostle did was he he used the story of, of Esther, one of my favorite stories, to, um, <laughs> to, show, to showcase, you know, that, you know, the time was now for me. And um, there was an opportunity to do um, campus ministry that my name had come to him. And that if if I had chosen not to step up and do the and do the work, you know, someone else would would um you know come in and do that work. So God would, so like the, just similar to the story of Esther when Mordecai came to Esther and said, if deliverance doesn't come from you, um, God will find deliverance elsewhere. And so as he was talking with, with that first encounter and as he was just encouraging me 
um, encouraging me to come to Rehoboth and encouraging me to continue the um, campus ministry that was happening at Rutgers. I was like, okay, let me think about it. <laughs> after he had talked to me and after he had conveyed um, conveyed some information to me, I just said, let me just think. And so for a week, I decided to just sit on it and think about um, what I could potentially, what I may be potentially um, committing to and what this may mean for me um, as someone on campus and as someone who was also trying to build a faith. So eventually after much thinking and um, the Holy Spirit encouraging me, you know, I said, okay, let me check Rehoboth out. Let me see what it is. And then also um, it's, it's not a bad thing to spread the gospel on campus. Okay. Um, God be the glory. So through that, I began to get, I just began coming to Rehoboth um, and starting to get into the fold. And as I became, and as I started to come there, I was like, wow, all the stuff Stephanie was saying, she was right. Um, like there was like, there was a time when um, I had a conversation. It was like an hour long conversation. And we were just talking about how um, First Lady was just different. We were like, it was like, we were just talking and talking and talking about her. And we were like, yeah, she's so different. She's so genuine. She's so kind. She actually remembers your name. Um, she like she called me. She texted me. We we're like, like, yeah, this lady is different. And I was just like, yeah, there's something different about the Portuguese. And so their genuine spirit, spirit really pulled me, um, pulled me to, um, pulled me to Rehoboth and pulled me to God. And so I really appreciate um, them availing themselves and encouraging me uh, at, at this season of my life. Um, one, one of the things I want to say is that, um, you know, my family has our hardcore, if you meet the Trema family, you'll, you'll learn that half the family is hardcore COP members. So I've grown up in this church. Uh, I have, I have um, family members who are pastors and elders and deaconesses and all of that. And, but I had never really had a relationship with any of them. It was really, you know, I come, I go, I come and I go. And since being at Rehoboth, it was, I would say it's my first time where I really developed a authentic relationship with the ministers that were there. And to this day, it shocks me because coming to Rehoboth, that was never my expectation. Um, it was something that if they didn't give to me, like I would, I would have moved on, you know, I've been okay. Um, even, so they gave me something that I didn't realize that I wanted, relationship. And so having the ability to just um, have a relationship with um, men and women of God who are on fire for Christ and who are leading this generation has been so amazing and has been such a blessing to me. Um, they were looking at some notes that were at some point so I don't forget. <laughs> but there was an instance where I was speaking to Apostle a few weeks ago and we were just having a very candid conversation, and and I was and as I was talking to him, I was and as the conversation came to an end, I was just like, "Yeah, Eunice, you have to be careful of not getting too familiar with Apostle because this conversation that you just had, like, think about it. This thing would not have been replicated. This this thing could have not been replicated with any other person um, that I have been interacting when it comes to leadership." And so it was just like, you know, don't get too familiar. And, and so I just want to appreciate them for their openness, um, for their honesty, for their transparency, for just being themselves and for being um, people that I can speak to, that I can relate to, that I can share my thoughts about backlash. And even if we don't, are not on the same level of understanding, there's still that space to communicate. Like Apostle and I have had instances where we didn't agree on something, <laughs> but it was it was but I felt comfortable uh, in communicating that to him, and so I just appreciate this environment that he has created, and I want to say that I don't take it for granted. Um, this environment that you have created, um, what you have done for um pe young people like me, um people across generations, and what you have poured into. Um, those within COP and then outside of COP, because I see your impact even um, with people who are not connected to the church. So I just wanted to say, 
Um, sincerely, I say thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you, Chris. So with that said, I see we have a few hands up. So I'm gonna ask Mama to um to speak. Mama B, the floor is open. Okay. Hi everyone. Praise the Lord. Um, so um, I just want to start off by saying that prior to coming to Rehoboth, I was not a spiritual person. I always went to church. Um, Mama, your audio is cutting out a bit. You... Um, sorry, let me. Try speaking again, please. Okay. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay. So um, I refer to myself as a Sunday only Christian because I will literally only go to church on Sundays, grab my Bible, and then from Monday to Saturday, don't talk to me about God. Like I wasn't that interested. Um, so then Grace told me about Rehoboth. I said, sure, I'll come. Why not? Um, and I had going in, I had the same intentions, go to church Sunday. After that, don't talk to me. Um, but then there was this one Sunday, this one Friday, I went to prayer meeting. And I think it was an event, like an all night or something like that. And then um, first lady pulled me to the side and asked, are you okay? Like she sensed there's something in me that I need to get out. And during that time, I was going through something that I don't think anyone even knew about and I don't think anyone knows about till today um and I was just like why is she like looking into my soul like what is this <laughs> because I don't I don't like this um so she invited me over to the house and we talked about it which was really weird for me because I had never in my Christian life experienced you know someone reaching out and saying hey come over we'll be in a neutral environment we could talk about it um, even talking to her about it I felt really weird so I'm like okay she's gonna judge me but she did not and that was a blessing. Um, so after that, I started going to church more frequently. Um, I started, um, sometimes I had time permitting, I would go to like Wednesday Bible studies, Friday prayer meetings. And then I remember very vividly one of um, my very, my, the funniest encounters I had with Apostle. After church, I told him that I don't like praying out loud. It's not something that I'm comfortable with. And... <laughs> The following Wednesday, Josh texts me and he's like, hey, um, Apostle said you're doing closing prayer on Friday. <laughs> and I looked at him like, what are you talking about? Like, I just told him that I don't like doing that. But I am glad that he pushed that on me because ever since I got that out of the way, I feel like I got the confidence to be able to pray out loud. Um, because now if my name is on the, pro on the program and I'm able to, I know I won't like oh, why am I, is my name on there, you know? So I am very thankful for the push. And when the, the porter piece are pushing you, they push with some strength. Yeah, you can't get out of it. So I am very grateful for that. Um, even though they've been very consistent in pushing, there are times where I kind of push back. Um, I remember going to Eagles Gathering um, in 2020. It was my first step towards, you know, okay, I will take my Christian life serious. And I remember going and then Apostle said to me that before I leave here, I am going to get the gift of the spirit. And I'm looking at him like, this is something I never even imagined for myself. You know, I never envisioned myself getting any spiritual gifts or anything like that. So I was like, okay, <laughs> we'll see. Um, and while we were praying, he was like, oh, you no. Know, um, he feels the presence of Lord here. And I'm just getting there like, I don't feel anything, but okay. Um, and the whole time I was just really closed off, but I kept convincing myself that, oh, you know, I'm open to God to do whatever he wants to do in my life. But I wasn't, I was closed off. Um, so I finally did allow myself to be opened, um, to be, accept, you know, the spirit of God. And before I left, true, true, I started speaking in tongues. And I, was like, I was just like, wow, okay, maybe this, you know, God really is real, you know, he really does this. 
So ever since then, I have been more um, into um, building my spiritual relationship with God. Um, there were times where um, I would slip back a few times, especially during quarantine. Um, but Apostle faithfully, every week he would send me the link to Wednesday um, Bible study, Friday. Pre I never joined them because I really did not. I was, you know, I still slip back to my old ways, but he kept pushing, he kept pushing and something struck and I don't know what it is or when it was, but it struck and I just want to give thanks to God that even though I would always fight back, they never gave up on me. Um, I remembered once telling a post, uh, first lady, this blew my mind because it had never happened to me before. I told her how I wanted to fast and I don't know how to fast and all that stuff. And she took the time to make like a mini um, fasting guide for me. And I was like, wow, that's, she has time for this. So I was very grateful for that. So all in all, long story short, I am so grateful unto you guys, both of you, for unlocking levels in my spiritual life that I did not even know I wanted unlocked. And I feel like God used um, you guys to unlock the most, like, you know, the entry level of the things that he has planned for me. And I am grateful unto you for seeing something in me that at the time I did not even see. You know, there were things that I guess God revealed to you guys that he had not revealed to me yet. And I am grateful that through you, God has been able to reach me, someone who was just lost and wandering the world. And I was lost, but now I am found. And I will stay found um, with the grace of God. So I, I am just so grateful unto both of you and God bless both of you and that is all yeah, god bless you thank you god bless you sister mame thank you for sharing your testimonial to the port of peace um i saw sister gladys's hand up so i'll go to her and then we'll follow up with sister pearl and continue to raise your hand if you would like to share a testimonial to the port of peace this evening thank you uh, amen Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, hi, family. I've been out here, like how also likes to call me. Um, <laughs> um, I just wanted to share something um, about Apostle that I actually have never shared this with him. But um, for those of you that don't know, my dad passed away in 2013. And um, I graduated college in 2019. And um, college was like something me and my dad talked about and it was something we both were very eager to see me through and I remember when my college graduation came um I was I I, I dealt well like I, I could say with my dad's death but when college came around because it was something that we spoke about so much um I I, I struggled with that like going to the end and being finished with that and um I remember I told Pat, um, Apostle and Sofa Mame that I'm graduating, but I didn't make it such a big deal because I just didn't want so many people to like make a big deal out of it. And I remember um, I didn't expect Apostle to come and it was like at the end and he came. And um, I remember like just the few words that he said to me, it meant so much to me because I remember he was like, hey, everybody, my daughter graduated. And those words alone, um, I never told Apostle, but those words alone felt, um, were meant so much to me because I know those were the same words and the enthusiasm that he even had, it even surprised me. I didn't even know what to do with it, but um, that alone, um, it touched me. And I never have shared that with Apostle, but um, that alone, I, I, God bless you because you don't know how much that meant to me in that moment. Because um, that's gonna, I, I cherish that moment that you gave me because um, I didn't think I would have that then. Um, so God bless you for that apostle. Um, so for my man, hmm, I've known self for my man for a long time. And even when I was growing as a little girl, I remember she always say like, oh, I, 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 I see myself in you. And it's like, then we were not like, you know, you guys were in Boston and things like that. So I didn't really get to know you much, but as I've gotten close to you or we've gotten close proximity, like, 
the drive that you have, like, I don't know how many cups of coffee you drink in the morning, but I want to tap into that blessing. <laughs> but um, seeing that you see yourself in me, it's like, wow, I, I hope one day I could see that in myself. Um, I want to thank you for the conversations. Like, so if mama doesn't know the pivotal role that she even has in my career now, I can't say that I made this choice where I am today if I do not mention her name. Um, I remember when I told her I was struggling with what path I should take, it was one of two. And she really encouraged me, like, I'm not like, look at yourself and um, prayerfully seek God and figure out where you want to go. And if I could say that I am where I am now is because of her words and her encouragement. And I just want to say, God bless you all. And I know that whomever you're going to touch from here on now, even the people you have touched already. And I pray that they experience your heart for people because you do care about the heart of everyone that you do come encounter with. And you do strive to grow personal relationship and not just touch them spiritually, but touch their lives and touch their careers and touch their families and touch them as a person. And I pray that God would she bless you Amen. and um, your children and your entire family. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. God richly bless you, Sister um, Gladys. With that said, I'll open the floor for Sister Pearl to give her testimonial. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Um. Okay. So now is I'd like to thank God for your um humbleness and. The ability to say yes, yes to your calling, yes to the young people in the lives of um, the National Youth and Pension Ministry as a whole. When it comes to um, Apostle George and Mama Cynthia, I've, I've actually um, known them from afar. I remember when they came into Chicago region at Columbus, Ohio, they, they, they would normally come to Chicago Assembly for um, district programs and leadership programs said that. And they would always inspire me from afar. I never really got to get closer to them or try to get to know them. But I remember um, a Holy Ghost convention, I believe 2018 or 2019, um, that was the phase when all the pastors within my region were leaving, getting pharaoh, getting transferred to different locations. But for Paul's support, even though we didn't know each other at all, I just said a quick hi, and he was like, hello, type of thing. And then he went his way, and then I went mind individually. But youth camp and Penta conferences has always been a great um, interaction with you guys. The way you guys are able to preach on the stage, encourage young people, and your passion for God is just so amazing, so in inspirational to many of us. Um, I also realized that... um. Chicago region, we had a recent program with the Ignition program and you guys were in, invited to come around. And I believe on the Saturday, I was introduced by my pastor to um, get into contact with Mama Cynthia. And ever since then, although we don't talk as much, but we're getting to know ourselves little by little. So it's, it's an honor. It's very, it's a privilege getting to know you guys. And even in this tough time that you guys are in. I'm just praying that the Holy Spirit will comfort you and give you guys a big hug in all that you guys do. You guys are so amazing. Every um, situation that you guys face throughout your whole um, transfer journey and even till now, it's there's a reason behind everything that you guys went through. So I, I love you guys. You guys are such strong people and great people. Your books and everything. I bought some of your books already and it's amazing, and my encouragement to you is continue to shine, continue to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, and allow the Spirit of God to move in your individual ministries. God bless you guys. I love y'all. Thank you. Yeah, love you, Mom. Bless, bless you. you. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you, Sister Pearl. I'd like to now open the floor for um, Sister Stella to give her testimonial to the Porta Fees. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I'll make it quite brief um, and share how we got into um, Rehoboth. Uh, it was after the pandemic 
And unfortunately for us, where we were fellowshipping, um, they had to stop um, with everything that had gone on. And so we were home and we would um, do our own thing with God on a personal um, level. And um, I also, let me mention that I also happened to know Mama Margaret a seminar through a friend. So every now and then we will communicate. We used to do that when they were in, um, I think, Virginia, um, Maryland, Virginia. And then they came to um, New Jersey. So I was having a conversation with Mama Margaret and she asked me where we go to church. And I said, oh, my church died um, with COVID. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then she said, um, I'm going to um, send you to one of our churches um, in, she mentioned one of the places in New Jersey and I smiled and I don't know, but I'm sure the power of God just did some revelation to her. So she went like, oh, you don't go to Ghanaian churches, right? <laughs> and I smiled back and I said, oh, not that. And she said, okay, if that's the case, then I wouldn't take you to where I'm taking you, but I'll bring you to Wayne, New Jersey, because it's different. Although it's the same Ghanaian church and it's the same COP, it's different. And I said, yes, please. And um, that was the conversation. In my head, I was still dealing with some things. And a couple of days later, I got a phone call from Mama Cynthia and she introduced herself to me and she was very nice on the phone. And I was like, wow, that's something because uh, many times when people get into positions and they're busy, genuinely busy, they don't have the time to put into individual things like phone calls to people they don't know and all of that. So that meant a lot to us. And um, we did come for a visit. And we loved it. It was so nice. Our kids were like, mommy, here, here. Because at the time we were like church searching. <laughs> but um, to be honest with you, we felt so out of place. Eric and I were like, oh, this is like for, <laughs> for kids in quotes. And um, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this well. So um, we went that season for a while dealing with it mentally. And Apostle and Mama Cynthia, um, I don't think they knew what we were thinking, but they um, made sure that we felt at home. And it was almost as if, okay, you're not alone. We're also old here. <laughs> so um, it, it just, uh, just happens to be um, there are a few old people but we can do this and all of that. I just want to um, say Mama Cynthia and Apostle, thank you so much because we really don't know where God is putting us um, in certain um, times and seasons of our lives. And although physically we might think, oh, this is not it because we're looking at certain things. God knows what it is. It is that he has for each and every one of us and the seasons that we have to go through. And again, it might not be what we expect and or what we want, but when we obey, amazing things happen. And thank you for just allowing God to use you and the humility that you carry. I can't even put it in words because... Um, I don't know whether you want to hear this from me, but you guys are big shots, you know. Oh. And so um, to um, to just come so um, low to our, everybody's level, I'm listening to these um, testimonials from everyone, and it just speaks to the humility that you carry. May the good Lord bless you and strengthen you. I must confess that one of our kids was like, oh, mommy, they are leaving. Are we leaving too? And I'm like, no, we're not. <laughs> we're not, but um, <laughs> I'm grateful that you're not leaving out of state and we Get to see you every now and then so god bless you and even as um, he adds more responsibility to to you may he strengthen you may he equip you and may you continue to touch many more lives in your generation amen, amen. amen. thank, thank, you, so thank you so much amen god bless you, bless you. um well aunties um stella <laughs> So with that said, we will take one or two more um, testimonials um, before we, um, as we move throughout the program. If you didn't get the opportunity to um, testify today and share, um, just share your thanks and appreciation to the Portafees, Friday will be another opportunity for you. So as I call upon Elder Josh to give his testimonial, if there is any other testimonial that is burning on your heart and you would like to share it today, I will give you that opportunity. But afterwards, we will um, start to wrap up. Thank you. Elder Josh. Amen. Amen. I told everybody I wasn't going to speak because of my voice, my infection. But people were saying stuff that reminded me and I just wanted to throw something in before Friday with the busy. Uh, one thing I've learned about Apostle and people are always asking me 
you know, how are you able to, how are you able to do all this and that? Why are you you're doing this? You're doing that so many times. And it took me a while to realize, but I think just watching Apostle, I picked up those qualities of just selflessness and just mm -hmm. to God. Um, <clears throat> and, and I'm speaking as a, as a, forgive me for my voice. I'm speaking as a brother, as, as Josh, not as a presiding elder. I think <laughs> that, <laughs> um, I sometimes wonder how I'm able to like keep going and just juggle all these things. And we, I don't do it for show and Apostle definitely doesn't do it for show. I, lit I will literally walk in during a weekday to the church and I'll just hear him like pray and interceding for the church in his office. He wouldn't even know like I'm, I'm around and just whenever something comes up, Apostle will just jump up, jump at it. Literally, he would make himself available to everything unless his, even if his strength won't, won't allow him to, he will still make himself available some way, somehow, unless some conflict, unless it's two meeting conflicts at the same time, he would try to make both happen at the same time. And that just speaks to his commitment to making sure that you know, the work of God is going on. And that is one big quality I respect about Apostle. I thank God for him and Sophie Mohammed. They're always giving their well to, to God, whatever it is, you know, they've accepted the call upon their lives and, you know, they're, they're, they're they really have good intentions and they're really passionate about um, all that they do. We give them a hard time a lot of times, you know, they, they're usually, you know, back and forth here and there, but it's always a learning experience from us. And Apostle and Sophie Mohammed, I want to say God bless you so much. Just know that some of the things we may not have said to you in the last couple of years, but a lot of us have been paying attention and some of us were not even realizing that we're picking up these qualities on, on the other on it. Apostle specifically, just your selflessness, just your sacrifice of giving your all, your all to God and to God's work. I say, may God bless you so much for that. Bless you. Amen. Thank you, presiding elder, um, for that and sharing it to the Portafees. So I do see two more hands. These will be the last um, testimonials for this evening. If you have a testimonial, please prepare for Friday so you can share to Apostle Mike and Mama Cynthia. So with that said, I did see um, Sister Lydia's hand go up first. So I'll open the floor for you and then we will have our brother King um, give the last testimonial. Praise the Lord. Can everybody um, hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, I just want to say, God bless you, Apostle and Mama Cynthia. Um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I'm the quiet one. My husband is the one that talks a lot, but people think it's opposite. Um, <laughs> um, so actually Apostle, it's, it's funny how, so when I came to, um, Rehoboth, um, Sister Peggy's the one that actually invited me. She was like, oh, come to Rehoboth, you're gonna love it. So I was like, oh, you know, we, we go to um, PIWC in the Bronx and, you know, my husband pretty much was raised in that church. So I was like, well, you know, I got married. So you kind of follow your husband to church. Um, <laughs> so I went one Sunday, this was, I believe, January of 2021 or 2020. And I instantly loved it. Um, so I was, con I was convincing my husband, I was like, you have to go, you're, you're gonna love it. But he's so set on, you know, staying in the Bronx. I was like, no, just go, I'm gonna watch Peter and you just go and just experience it for yourself. So he went one Sunday and then came back. He was like, oh my God, I love it. We're gonna, now we're gonna go to, you know, Rehoboth. So he did the whole transfer thing with, you know, from the Bronx to Rehoboth. And he took care of that. I was, I was really shocked that he actually was, you know, so into transparent. But um, the Sunday that I came to Rehoboth, um, Pastor actually came up to me and was like, oh, hi, how are you? And, you know, I mentioned my name and he was like, you look familiar. I was like, yeah, my father is, you know, Elder Ben in Ohio. He was like, oh my God, you know, I love the jumpos. I was like, yeah, you know, we're a lot, we're everywhere. <laughs> um, and then, and then uh, you know, he mentioned it to Mama Cynthia. Mama Cynthia was, oh my God, you know, those are my girls in Ohio. I was like, yeah, they mentioned, they, you know, they talk about you guys a lot. And instantly that was the connection there. Um, and I would say Mama Cynthia is someone that I look up to. I love the way she just, loves marriage and that's one thing that I love you know she talks about 
her marriage. She talks about, you know, finding the right person, knowing who, you know, you're married to, having the connection with your spouse. And I know there's a lot of young people in the church who are not married, but I would just say, um, just continue to pray. You know, just as Mama Cynthia keeps telling us, just continue to pray, seek the face of God for the right spouse, because that changes your whole life. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that, you know, pastor, I mean, apostle found the right one because through her, we're, we're experiencing, we're, we get to see what a good, what a good Christian marriage looks like. And I'm so glad that my husband and I have that, you know, somebody to look up to. Um, and Peter loves Kogi. I mean, every Sunday, every Sunday, he's like, mommy, we're going to church to see Jesus. And, you know, we're like, yeah. And he's like, oh, and Kobe too. I was like, yeah, we're going to go see Kobe too, you know. Um, but we, you know, we literally fa uh, fallen in love with you guys. Um, we thank you for the encouragement. And Apostle, I just want to say thank you for pushing my husband. Um, he's, a, he's a quiet person, but, you know, when he gets to talking, you know, he gets to speak his mind. And I thank you for pushing him to be in you know, be involved in the church. Um, that's one thing that he's, he's, I can see he's so passionate about. I mean, he comes home and he's like, you know, doing church stuff. And I'm like, you're still on the computer. And he's like, yeah, I have to finish this. And he still goes to work, you know, in the morning he's up and going to work. But I can see how passionate he is. And I, I know he's learned that from you. And I just want to thank God for your lives. I just want to thank God for what you're instilling in us. Um, Thank you for, for pushing us to just continue to pray. Even if you're married, even if you're not married, you just push it to continue to pray because you never know what that anybody that does not like, you know, when there's a togetherness. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that you have, you have shown us that even though, you know, you're at peace in the church at home, you just have to continue to pray because that's one thing the enemy wants to destroy the peace that is amongst us. So I just want to thank you so much. And Peter loves you guys. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's one thing I would say, like, he loves the church. He loves every, literally everyone in the church he loves. And I'm so glad he gets to experience that. And, you know, that's when it, it just brings me so much joy that he's being raised in the church where he's, he feels loved. He feels comfortable. He doesn't just come to church and just sits down and, you know, just sits in, in his corner, but he's able to interact with every single one. And I'm so <laughs> glad that he gets to experience that. Um, and Kobe, Peter's sleeping now, but I know if he was awake, he would say, hi, Kobe. <laughs> so I'm going to say that to him, you know, for oh. him. Hi, Kobe. <laughs> um, but we want to we wanna thank you so much. My husband and I and Peter, we want to thank you so much. And Mama Cynthia, I am praying for that strength that you have because I don't know how you do it because <laughs> I'm doing now. I remember I texted you one time. I was like, I don't know how you do it because being pregnant, you having a family, going to school and working full time. I don't know how you do it, but thank God for strength. You just, you know, keep encouraging and telling me that, you know, just keep pushing. You have the strength. And I want to thank you for instilling that in me that I have that strength. I can see God doing it because it's it's amazing how I'm able to pass my classes and still do what I have to do as a wife and a mother. Um, so I want to thank you. God bless you so so much. And we're gonna come visit one day and probably leave Kobe to you for you guys um, because I know he wouldn't want to leave. But um, thank you and God bless you so so much. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much as well. Bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you, Sister Lydia. Um, so we will now leave the floor open for our brother King, who has his hand up, and he will give the last testimonial for this evening. Thank you so much, uh, Sister. I, I would like to say God bless you so much, man of God. I've known Apostle Mike for almost 10 years ago when I went to college. Some of us, as much as we try to run away from God, we see him dragging us back to him. You know, I remember when we first, I decided to go away for college and, uh, you know, just, you know, <laughs> stay away from church a little bit, come to find out that 
while I was running away, he had something in store for me. So I went to school just like anybody else. And by God's grace, a pencil came through. But that time we were 17 years old in college. We didn't know anything about ministry. And then uh, I first met Apostle through Elder uh, um, Albany, Elder Obin, Elder Obin connected us. At the time, uh, Apostle was in Boston. I actually attended Apostle's farewell. And I was so sad because Apostle is going to Ohio. All the way in Ohio, I'm in New York. How am I going to find him? But the way God's work was so amazing that when I found out he was coming back to New Jersey, it was amazing. One thing that I love about this man of God is prayers. I come to Rehoboth and I just tell the opening prayer. I say, hey, this is just opening prayer. Opening prayer, the kind of fire and then the intensity that is engulfed in, in the church is just so unbelievable. You see, I always say that our parents always call, you know, the men of God that came and go, the generals of God that have come and gone. But I know for sure that one day, one day, when they are to ask us in our time, who were the people that made the best impact? I'll be, I'll be wrong not to mention Apostle's name. Apostle has impacted me so many ways. Even when he will call me, even when I least expect it, he will call me and say that, I want you to come over and I say that, Apostle, what have you seen about me? But regardless, he's always finding way when I come. Sometimes, you know, the cameras is rolling. I want to stay at the back, so there's no problem. But yeah, Apostle will like, come and help me out. God bless you so much, Apostle. We thank you for the calling upon your life. It would have been a robbery to the kingdom of God if you weren't called. You will change wow. life forever. And we are forever grateful that wherever that we stay, we will say that, yes, you have impacted us so many ways. Because of you, the fire in us continue to burn. Because mm -hmm. you know that you, you, you are counting on us to continue with the journey. I know that you are just warming up and your best is yet to come. Nations will know you. And one day we know, we know for sure that even if man do not clap for you, and this will clap for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Brother King, for um, that last testimonial onto the Portofees. And God richly bless everyone who has taken the time to give a testimonial and give thanks. At this time, we are going to call upon Elder Mike, and he's going to lead us in prayer as we pray for the Portofees. So, Elder Mike, the floor is open as you lead us in prayer. Amen. 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 Uh, we thank the Lord. What we have done is scriptural. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 13, it says, We ask you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and who, um, who labor among you and over you in the Lord and admonish you to esteem them very highly in love. And I thank God all the testimonies that has come up um, fulfill scripture. It says we should esteem them very, very highly in love. And that is what we have done. And it says because of their work. Um, I just want to make sure that we understand is that Bible demands that we esteem the men of God, the women of God, the family of God that God has placed over us. And that admonish us that we should esteem them very highly because of their work. I don't want you to think that, oh, why are we doing all these things? I want you to know that this is scriptural and God has demanded that we esteem the people that he has placed over us, does labor after us very highly love because of their work, because of their work. So what, everything that we have done is very scriptural and I thank God for the different testimonies that he has given. Uh, because of our time, we're going to I'll, some, I'll just uh, we're going to do two prayer topics, two main areas. Uh, the first of all, um, I want us to pray. We are going to pray, um, asking that the Lord, you know, the very gifts that God has given us that we have enjoyed. The, you know, when I was listening to the test. 
their listening skills, their caring skills, their prayer skills, their encouragement skills, their teaching skills. We are praying that the Lord even would make this double and triple fold as they move forward even to the next level. So the different talent, the different skills that we have enjoyed, that we are giving testimony of, we are praying that God would increase those skills upon their life so that as they move on, even lives and many people will be touched even about the great things that God has used them to do here. So shall we just pray? Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Amen. 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 Our next prayer, we are praying that the Lord should strengthen them, that the Lord should empower them, and that the Lord should bless this family. Amen. And we're also praying that the Lord should keep them from any arm or uh, the way of arm, anything that the enemy may plan against their life, even as they move forward to the next level. We are praying that the protective hand of the Lord will protect and show them against any harm and take them out of arm's way. And finally, we're going to pray. You see, in this job, there are so many temptation and other negativism. We are praying that even as those things come, the Lord may give them the wings even to soar higher, to soar greater, and to overcome every temptation, to overcome every negativity. Shall we just pray? We pray the Lord to strengthen the strengthen the Thank 
Gracious God, mm. you gave us a gift, oh God. Mm. You gave this family to us as a gift. Mm. And Lord, in your own wisdom, you mm. want others even to also enjoy this gift. We thank you, oh God, for the lives mm. of the Potiphar's. Lord, we appreciate you, oh God. That even you found us ready even to appoint them unto us. That we should enjoy the ministry and the gift that you went through. We thank you, O oh God, for giving them as a shepherd even unto us. We thank you, O oh God, for giving them as ministers to minister to our spiritual needs. We thank you, O oh God, for giving them even the gift that they will reach out to the souls in our communities. And these testimonies, O oh God, witness of the great job, O oh God, that you have worked through. Father, we want to say thank you. Lord, with the Potiphar family, we want to say, oh God, I want to join them in the one voice to say thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, oh God, even for the fellowship and for the prayers and for everything, oh God, the ministry that you give to us. Lord, even as they move forward, we are asking, oh Lord, that Lord, you empower them. That Father empower them, oh God. Father strengthen them. And Father encourage them. Father give them the wings of evil. That even when things come in their way, you may give them the ability to soar higher. Father let them soar higher. When negativity can let them soar higher. I pray, oh God, even when temptation can, give them the power to overcome. Lord, it is unto you, oh God that this words has been said. We dedicate all this word into your blood. Lord, sanctifying it and making it even another double skill, oh God, that you will give them even unto the next realm. That Lord, in the next level, even they may be greater and mighty. That Lord, Robo will look and be proud that Lord, you gave us this gift and you are doing mighty things with them. I pray, oh God, that Lord, you will supply all their needs even as they move forward. 
Lord, their spiritual needs, Lord, their physical needs, Lord, their emotional needs, throughout, oh God, for that be with them. For that I pray, oh God, that Lord, through them, may your work, oh God, reach many, and may many souls even be won, even unto your kingdom. We thank you for this gift, for the great thing that you have done. Lord, with one love, we thank you, and we say we appreciate you the ministry that you gave to us and that Lord you found that favor that Lord even we also even should allow this gift to be used in other places because we recognize and we appreciate that this gift is not only for us but it's for all nations we thank you oh God even for that spirit bless you bless this family and keep them safely in your hand in Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, Elder Mike, for leading us into that time of prayer for the Port of Peace. At this time, we would like to open the floor for um, any responses or remarks from um, Apostle Mike or Mama Cynthia. The floor is open for you all. Uh, can we speak on Friday? Um, okay. All I would right, say for now is thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That is fine. Okay, that is fine. Then I will um, fast forward and I will give us our announcements for the month of July, August, or August. So, as you all know, we are in a week of appreciation. So, this was just the, the starter course when it comes to just appreciating um, the portafees and taking the time to just verbally. Um, tell them you know what the goodness of what the lord has done and so friday will be another opportunity to also appreciate apostle uh, mama cynthia and the family so if you have any testimonials um i ask that you reach out to me so that we can um slot you in and we know how many people will be sharing their testimonials so we encourage you to come and just share what the lord has done so again that last friday will be um this friday and it starts at 7 p.m and you are encouraged to share the link with those that also may want to give a testimonial to the port of peace. So that said, um, one of the most important announcements is um, our Sunday service. So Sunday will be um, the farewell and welcome service. So it will be the farewell service for Apostle Mike, um, Mama Cynthia, um, and the children. And it will be the welcome ceremony for um, Pastor Che and Mrs. Abigail that are coming in. We ask that you prepare yourself for that Sunday. We ask that you be on time. Church starts promptly at 10 a.m. Again, church starts promptly at 10 a.m. Please be on time. It's going to be a packed Sunday. So we ask again that you be on time. So that is August 7th. And we ask that you just prepare yourself. Lastly, um, outside of the farewell and welcome services, um, August 18th to 19th will be um, Pensa USA. They will be holding a relentless prayer marathon and the program will start at 10, 8, 10 p.m. EST. So that is all for announcements. And at this time, I'd like to open the floor for um, Apostle Sumner, if he has any closing remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Eunice. That has been a very great coordinating. And thanks to every one of you that have had the opportunity to uh, speak into the life of Apostle and uh, Mrs. Porofi and the family this evening. Uh, myself and my wife, close to me here, uh, very, very much appreciative uh, to all that we're hearing uh, this uh, very uh, night uh, when ministers are posted to uh, the various uh, uh, districts and therefore the assemblies. Uh, we pray for uh, this cordial relationship and also uh, praying that there will be shepherds indeed over the flock. And indeed, the testimonies that we're hearing this evening proves 
that indeed they have been a gift, they have been shepherds, they have been fathers, they've been mothers, and the children has been uh, a great friend to our other children in the uh, Rehoboat family. Uh, we want to thank them, and as the prayer has gone up this very night, will not be the last time, but we'll continue to pray that the Lord will use them at a higher uh, level. Again, I want to thank every one of you that has been able to uh, reach uh, out to them in various ways. Between uh, tomorrow and Friday, it's another opportunity if the Lord spare our lives for us to speak into their lives, to encourage them, to keep praying for them, and to let them know that they are loved. For tonight, every one of you that spoke, the Lord bless you. For those who have not had the opportunity, uh, Friday, the Lord spare our life. You'll be given that opportunity to do the uh, same. And so also to uh, Elder Dr. Ai, uh, whom the Lord used this evening. I want to say, uh, Doc, the Lord uh, richly uh, bless you. I pray that every one of us will have a good night and that uh, Sunday we will uh, await the greater blessing from the Lord. God richly bless you and I love you, uh, uh, Real World family. Thank you. Thank you, um, Apostle Samno, and God richly bless you. We surely appreciate you um, taking the time to also just give your remarks on this program. Amen. So with that said, we will call Brother Chris to give us the closing prayer. And from there, Apostle um, Asamno, please give us the benediction as we come to a close. Amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for how far you have brought us this evening. We thank you for the lives of the Polyphi. We thank you for how far you have brought Rehoboth. Listening to in the history from when it was first started and now Rehoboth has been the name of every household. We just want to keep Apostle and the family the same spirit that he has nurtured this church. May them not lack of anything in life. May you continue to protect them. Wherever they go, they should be a blessing. They have been a blessing to the church. And I pray that your favor should always be with them everywhere they go. We are about to live in your presence. We are about to go to sleep. May you visit us in our sleep. You commit the rest of the program into your hands of God. Friday, Sunday, that the Lord should continue to reign in both days. May both service be blessing to us. May it be a prosperous service, and we will give all grace and honor to you, God. We we'll commit our to a seminar with the leader into the hands of God and the family. May you continue to bless him, to be a blessing to the church as well, that now Apostle Polofi is living, he will also be a blessing to us. And Rehoboth will keep flourishing. We bless your name. We bless every single person that's on the line to the hands of God. May God continue to bless us. May God continue to be with us. And we will all meet again Friday and Sunday. We thank you, God, for how far you have brought us and what you have continued to do in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. And again, may the Lord continue to bless you. He make his face shine upon you. And may he direct grace your part every hour. Now may the grace, same grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, 
rest, remain, and abide with you as you go. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Don't go, don't go.